Hello, welcome to the Connect IQ User Experience Guidelines. My name is Nicholas Kral, and I am the Connect IQ Product Manager. In this session, we will break down the phases of designing an app by looking at what you are making, working the concept, defining the interactions, bringing in the visual design, and then some best practices. The Connect IQ system allows third-party developers to bring their design and experience to Garmin products. When creating content for Connect IQ, the best place to start is understanding what you want to build and who do you want to build it for. Garmin makes products for many users, but let's focus on Garmin customers who will use Connect IQ products. The wellness user is looking for 24-7 tracking of their body. For these customers, metrics like stress, body battery, and understanding their overall health are very important. Fitness users want their Garmin to record workouts, track their progress, and achieve their goals. For these customers, the Garmin activity experience is very important. During their workout, they want to focus on their workout, but also want to be able to use their Garmin to understand and improve their performance. They may wear their Garmin all day, or it may only come out during their workout. The outdoor user brings their product as part of their getaway. They use their Garmin during the excursion, during which it is an important instrument. They use their Garmin for orientation and tracking their progress. Cyclists use their Garmin during their ride. They may be out for a casual ride, or it may be a three-hour workout. During that time, their Garmin is keeping tabs on their location, pace, power, and much more. Golfers bring their Garmin onto the golf course. Their watch provides cartography for the course, distance to the hole, and scorecard tracking. They may wear their Garmin all day or save it for the links. Your user may be a combination of these customers or bring in an entirely new use case. Now that you have identified who your users are, the next step is to identify what they're trying to do. They are using your app to achieve a particular outcome. Focus on the jobs they are hiring your app to do. The jobs could range from the user wants to see the time quickly and clearly to the user wants a quick glance of their stats for the day, seeing only key data points so they don't waste time and effort sorting through unwanted information. The usability of any design is relative to two variables, users and tasks. Apps on a Garmin device should be focused on allowing the user to accomplish key tasks quickly with minimal interaction. Save deep dives for mobile apps or for the web. Once again, keep it simple. Here are some common use cases for Connect IQ apps. The watch face is not only the home screen for the Garmin wearable experience, but also an opportunity for the user to express themselves. Custom watch faces allow you to bring brand and creativity to our customers. Connect IQ allows Garmin devices to communicate with third-party sensors. The information from these sensors can be recorded as extra activity information that can be displayed in Garmin Connect. Garmin supports a wide range of activities, but with Connect IQ, developers can extend the devices into workouts not supported natively, like dance, inline skating, and others. Garmin wearables are meant to be worn 24 seven, and Connect IQ apps allow our users to access your services at the flick of a wrist. Connect IQ allows content providers to extend their services to Garmin users. Content can be downloaded over Wi-Fi and securely stored on our devices for later playback by users, and you can enforce your playback tracking and subscription management within your Connect IQ app. Sometimes it's necessary to architect a solution that involves a variety of technologies. With the programmability, sensors, and connectivity options, Connect IQ compatible devices can often serve as a part of a larger solution. With an understanding of the problem you want to solve, you can focus on a design that meets these needs. Now we can begin looking at the important content and workflows to achieve the user's goals. Unlike other platforms, Connect IQ apps have context-specific app types that define where the user can run their app and defines what the interaction model is. 
Watch faces run as a home screen of Garmin wearables. They do not accept direct user input, but they can have settings that are editable within the Connect IQ mobile app. And on devices with API level 3.2, watch faces can have a launchable on-device configuration flow. Data fields are plugins that can display information within a Garmin activity. After they are installed, the user can place the data anywhere within the page loop of their activity. To protect the Garmin workout experience, data fields aren't allowed to take input. They can have settings that are editable within the Connect IQ mobile app, and on devices with API level 3.2, data fields can have an on-device launchable configuration flow. Widgets are a carousel of apps that the user can quickly navigate through. The base page has limited input, but can push pages to let the user dig in further. In 2019, Garmin introduced Glances. Glances are a scrollable list of key data, where each item has a displayable metric. The user can select any glance to dig in further. Both widgets and glances will time out after a certain period of inactivity. Device apps are launchable experiences that do not time out. Device apps can take input, manipulate the page stack, can communicate with the cloud and with wireless sensors. The user exits them by backing out of the main page. Audio content providers function as plugins to the music player. The user can select them to be their audio source. When the user launches the audio player, they will have access to the media controls that communicate with your app. But the user can perform deeper interactions by going into the media player submenu and tapping on your app icon. From here, you can add flows for downloading content, managing content, and beginning playback. The app type you choose should be based on the problem statement of your user. Is your goal to augment the workout experience? You should make a data field. Are you looking to let the user monitor a metric outside an activity? You should use a widget. However, the app type you choose puts limits on the available workflows. Watch faces and data fields do not take user input, but the user can enter an app-defined settings flow on the device or can edit settings in mobile. Data fields can record additional information into an activity file for display on Garmin Connect. The base page of a widget has limits placed on the inputs to allow user navigation of the carousel. On button products, usually the up-down buttons are used. Now that we know what we are building, we can talk about workflow. At this point, you should have an information architecture that outlines the goals of your app. You can now think about the kinds of interactions the user will do to get to that information. Garmin products use different hardware and technology to meet the needs and desires of our various customers. While the kinds of inputs can vary from device to device, the following abstract behaviors apply to all Connect IQ devices. The next previous action navigates to the next or previous item or to the next or previous page in the page loop. The select action picks an item out of a set of choices. The start stop action marks the beginning or ending of an activity session. On button products, this is often the same as select. The back action navigates the view hierarchy by popping a page off the view stack. The menu action brings up the settings menu for the application. While working out the workflow, it helps to think in terms of these key interactions and save more complicated interactions for later design phases. The traditional Garmin user interface is hierarchical, where views are stacked based on the user's in selections. Every device has a standard behavior for navigating the selections and backing out of the hierarchy, but these standard behaviors can be different from product to product. Try to limit the depth of your navigational hierarchy. Focus on quick selections and not forcing the user to make multiple choices. Page loops are carousels of views. When the user is in a page loop, the user interface presents a set of views of information that provide different data and insights to the user. There are standard behaviors for going to the next and previous pages. Going past the last view typically loops the user back to the first view, forming a loop of information. Page loops are an effective way to get more information than can fit on one screen. 
Here are some other common views. Dialogues are typically a modal screen with a textual message that the user must confirm reading to continue. These can be used for error messages, instructions, or other forms of guidance. Progress bars tell the user to wait for an asynchronous action to complete. There are two styles of progress bar, a standard progress bar that counts from 0% to 100%, and a busy progress bar for when the completion time cannot be quantified. Confirmations are pages to confirm a user action. They can be used to confirm a decision by the user or add a point of friction if the user is exiting a flow. Action views are full screen views of information with an indicator on how to access a selection menu of available actions. Action views are good when the user has reached a point where you wish to summarize information and given them a decision point in the navigational hierarchy. Here are the two common menu types. Selection menus allow the user to choose between two or more items. The items are presented on a one-dimensional list with optional iconography. A settings menu is typically available from the base view of the application via the menu behavior. The settings menu typically allows the user to alter global settings for the app. When mapping out your workflow, at some point there will be decisions that cannot be mapped to common UI patterns. At this point, you'll need to think about what the best way for the user to make a decision on the device. Garmin designs products with the use case in mind, and one key consideration of the product is if it's touchscreen or push button. For those of you who have primarily developed in the mobile space, physical buttons can be foreign. Touchscreens function well in indoor environments, but can be difficult to use with gloves, when wet, or when your body is in motion. For some environments, the tactile feedback of buttons makes for a better experience. Here are the common input patterns for the Garmin devices. The five button configuration puts three buttons on the left and two buttons on the right. The buttons are mapped to the following. Top left, press to toggle the backlight. Press and hold to access the controls menu. Middle left, press for a previous up behavior. Press and hold for a menu behavior. Bottom left. Press for a next down behavior. Top right. Press for a select behavior, commonly used for the start-stop action on Garmin activities. Bottom right. Press for a back behavior. The touchscreen two-button configuration combines a touchscreen with two navigation buttons. The top button is a start-stop button. Pressing and holding accesses the controls menu. The bottom button performs a back behavior. Pressing and holding the back button performs the menu behavior. The following actions are also standard. Swiping up will perform the previous up behavior. Swiping down will perform the next down behavior. Menus can be swiped with a touch screen. Tapping on a screen item performs a select behavior. Swiping left to right performs the back behavior. Connect IQ does allow for separate, tailored experiences for touch screens versus push button devices, but also provides tools that allow for a single implementation for both. Ultimately, it is up to you to choose if you want to tailor your app's interaction model for these different input patterns or not. Now let's talk visual design. Now that we have workflow and interaction paradigms, we can focus on incorporating visual design. Your visual design needs to combine both your brand and personality of the product you are designing for. Because every Garmin product is use case focused, they each have a distinct personality. The personality of the product is a combination of the choices made of the hardware itself and the focused interactions and the style of the software. The use case drives the display technology used for a Garmin product. Many Garmin products use a screen technology known as Memory in Pixel, or MIP. MIP displays are very low power because they depend on reflecting light, and they look brightest in outdoor use cases. The display technology is limited in color palette. Some offer up to 64 colors, while others offer only 8, or even black and white. 
The other common screen technology for Garmin devices is LCD or AMOLED displays. These offer much more colors and can look vibrant, but can also easily use more power in outdoor use cases. Different Garmin devices have different visual themes. Some devices go for dark text on light backgrounds, while others use the light text on dark backgrounds. There can be reasons besides aesthetics for these decisions. On MIP devices, dark on light is context specific and is used predominantly during activities to provide better at contrast. Because the screen is reflective, it achieves the best contrast in outdoor environments with black text on white backgrounds. On edge products, dark on light is based on daytime. Black text on white backgrounds during daylight hours for best contrast with white text on black backgrounds during nighttime hours to be easiest on the eyes in low light use. Devices with AMOLED or LCD screens use light on dark. Power on AMOLED displays is a function of the number of pixels turned on. By having a dark visual theme, devices with AMOLED displays can extend battery life while still incorporating beautiful imagery into the user interface. There are two kinds of system fonts on a Garmin device, the text font and the number font. The text font should be used for textual data and labels, while the number font is used for numerical data. The system fonts that come with the device have been tested for readability and should be used whenever possible. ConnectIQ allows developers to import a typeface into an app, but these typefaces only allow for one point size to be imported. Within the app, it is common to have a header portion at the top of the view. The header can have a small string of text or iconography to give the user context as to where they are within the application. On MIP products, with less available colors, it is common for the header to be a solid color. But on LCD or AMOLED displays, the header should be a gradient that fades to black. Different products have used different approaches for giving guidance to the user for actions on a view. On older button products, an action footer provides guidance to use the next behavior to trigger an action. On newer button products, a button hint is placed next to the physical button to indicate which buttons cause an action. On touch products, a touchable chevron at the bottom pushes a selection menu of options for the user. With different inputs, screen technologies, visual themes, and typography, Supporting all of the product personalities in your app can seem daunting. Here are some tips for making it easier. First, when making a visual theme for your app, identify a theme color that speaks to your brand and use that in your iconography and headers. If you can choose only one, focus on light on dark themes. A light on dark theme will look acceptable on devices whose personality by default are dark on light. Put the most important information front and center. Many times applications are not meant to be the focus of the user's attention. Clearly place the relevant information that they need on screen so the user can return to what they need to do quickly. The system fonts have been tested for readability, but you will have varying typeface sizes across devices. Keep any text on the device short or have it flow across pages. Custom typefaces should only be used to give a visual accent or to add a branding element to your app. Our user experience guidelines have the documentation on all the product personalities. Be sure to use that guidance so that your app feels like it belongs on the product. With that, you're ready to design your application. Thank you for your time.